Howdy freeze dryers, I've been wanting to start a new video series for quite a while now and I have no excuse not to since I have an XL freeze dryer. I wanted to start the freeze drying pantry series videos. I think a lot of people will benefit from this. Just having a lot of bulk ingredients that you can pull off of a shelf, make recipes and things like that. So with that, I would say milk is a very important bulk ingredient for the pantry series. So we're gonna start with that. I wanna see how many gallons of milk you can freeze dry at one time in the XL freeze dryer. So Let's get to it. <laughs> when I started freeze drying in 2017, I quickly started to realize that having freeze dried food and freeze dried ingredients like milk is no different than any asset, like an asset that you would have in a bank. Uh, if you buy it low, over time it will increase in value because if you have to replace it, it will cost you more. So to me, freeze dried food and freeze dried milk freeze dried ingredients are, are a great asset to have. And in the last few years, we've seen food prices and ingredients prices just skyrocket, sometimes hundreds of percents in a short period of time. And today's video will be a quick and easy one. There's really no prep other than pouring milk into pans. Uh, if you have the ability in an XL to pre-freeze, I would always recommend pre-freezing liquids. I don't have a, a deep freeze that's big enough to fit these XL pans. They're extremely large, so I'm to show you what I do to freeze dry liquids. So you definitely don't want to spill milk in your freeze dryer because it stinks, it makes a big mess, you have to pull the whole thing all apart. So what I do is just pull the, the tray out slightly and then just stick the nozzle of a milk container right in there. You're gonna to wanna to fill this up to just under the lip of this tray. The chamber of a freeze dryer can be slightly tilted towards the back, so make sure you keep an eye on the very back of that. And if you remember from the XL review video, an XL tray will hold just about to the top of the lip. So that's as full as I wanna get it. There is a little left. I wanna measure this to see uh, what we can safely put in here. I'm gonna weigh the trays also so we can get a rehydration formula. So it looks like just about two cups exactly was what we're left with. That means that we put 14 cups into an XL tray. I think that's quite a bit. Uh, that actually equals out to 84 cups, which equals out to about five and a quarter gallons of milk per cycle. And I'll be interested to see how long our cycle takes to freeze dry that five and a quarter gallons. Uh, and then we can actually put together something that will show you how much milk you can put away in a month or a year. And uh, you'll see very quickly how fast all of this can add up. I also weighed an XL tray with the 14 cups of milk on it. Uh, that way we can get a good rehydration formula so we can get a perfect glass of rehydrated milk when we're all done. This weight was 11 pounds, 10 ounces. That will vary obviously from brand to brand and uh, type of milk you're using. I'm using 2% today, but uh, that should give us a good baseline for the future. So that's all there is to it for milk. I'm just gonna load up the milk into the trays. No pre-freeze. Once this is completed and we have this video out and I have the results and I have the rehydration formula, I will post that in the freeze drying cookbook along with 300 plus other recipes at the time of this recording. And if the XL or one of the other size freeze dryers is something you think you wanna check out, check out some pricing and some specs, you can do that by using our affiliate link found down in the description. You can just click on show more and that will uh, show you all of our affiliate links and products that we enjoy and things like that and if you end up purchasing a freeze dryer through that affiliate link it helps out this channel it helps uh, show harvest right that we gave you the information to get you there it also helps support our Facebook and MeWe groups as well as other social media and it also helps us develop products to streamline freeze drying those can be found at freeze drying supplies.com if you have a moment and you like the content we're putting out there please let us know know by giving us a thumbs up and you can also subscribe to our channel live life simple we do primarily freeze drying on this channel you can do that by clicking on the rocking chair in the corner of the screen and while you're there click the bell that'll send you a notification every time a new video comes out we release a video every Sunday at 8 a.m. so now we just need to let the freeze dryer do its thing freeze dry the five and a quarter gallons of milk uh, it will take longer there's no doubt in my mind because we're not pre-freezing but uh, I will see you in a few minutes. 
So we ended up at 60 hours and 42 minutes. That's a pretty long cycle, but we did not pre-freeze. And the freezing part of the freeze dryer takes a very long time. And according to Harvest Right, our freeze dryer uses about $4 of electricity per day. That's a, that's a national average, so you can plus or minus whether or not you have uh, inexpensive or expensive electricity. And that means that that milk cycle for five and a quarter gallons basically cost us this much right here. But what we have now is some beautiful trays of freeze dried milk, some giant trays. Our milk cycle took approximately 60 hours or two and a half days. $4 per day to run the freeze dryer, that equals $10 in electricity. You take $10 in electrical costs plus the $21 for the actual milk itself. And that gives you $31 for 5.25 gallons of freeze dried milk. Let's get a weight on this and then we can figure out a rehydration formula. Our trays before freeze drying were 11 pounds, 10 ounces. They're now four pounds, two ounces. And to get our rehydration formula, what I've done, since we do not have XL dividers as of yet, I, they're coming, trust me, we're working on it. Uh, we want them as much as you do. But we, I have actually taken this and tried to divide it with some medium dividers into 14 equal portions. That way we can get, uh, since there's 14 cups in here, we can get the weight of one cup and get a rehydration formula uh, by dividing our before and after weight by 14. So if we take one of these portions that are cut into 14ths and we weigh it, we can take the after freeze dried weight, we can subtract that from the before freeze dried weight and then divide it by 14, that'll give us how much water was removed in the freeze drying process, and that will give us how much water in weight we need to put back into this one cup serving of milk. And that weight is basically one ounce, 1.1 1 .1 ounce is what I came up with. So I figured out it's about eight ounces of water to rehydrate, but if you look at the raw material of freeze dried milk, it's just about one cup. So we nailed that with our division by 14, I think if we add one cup of water to one cup of freeze dried milk, then what you are left with is one cup of freeze dried milk. It's perfect. So you're gonna wanna pay attention to a couple of things when you're rehydrating milk. One is if you're gonna compact it down into a Mylar bag or a mason jar or something like that, you need to pay attention to weight, not volume. So make sure that if you're rehydrating one cup of freeze dried milk, it needs to weigh, it's one ounce of material and then add one cup of water back in. Tip two with freeze dried milk, make sure that you stir this very well or mix it very well. You could even let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute or whatever uh, while mixing because otherwise you will have not necessarily chunks in your milk but kind of small freeze dried milk particles in there. And now that we know that our freeze dried milk is a success, let's put together some stats of if you ran your freeze dryer constantly with milk in it, what kind of uh, results you could put up in a month, in a couple months, even a year. Our milk cycle took roughly 60 hours. There's approximately 720 hours in a month, depending on what month it is. If you divide that by 60 hours, that means that you could get roughly 12 cycles in per month. I'm gonna call it 10 cycles to account for defrost time, prep time, sleep, etc. If you take that 10 cycles and multiply it times 5.25 gallons, you get 52 and a half gallons per month times 12 months. And that means that if you are ambitious enough to freeze dry for 12 months, you will get 630 gallons of freeze dried milk per year. And by my calculations, that's about $5.90 per gallon of freeze dried milk. So with this information, we can basically compare home freeze dried milk to commercially freeze dried milk. I figured it's about, uh, it's a little bit less than half of what you would pay for commercially freeze dried. Obviously after you own the freeze dryer, uh, I like to package mine in one gallons and that way you can just add this to a gallon jug or whatever, put a gallon of, uh, of water in with it, and then you have a gallon of milk whenever you need it. Uh, I realize I've done this milk video before, but I really like to redo some of these older videos uh, from several years ago or more, just because uh, we have new information, we have new rehydration methods, newer machines, newer software, different cycle times, things like that, and I think it just gives you a better grasp uh, with some new information. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, let us know by hitting the 
like button. Have a wonderful day. Remember to live life simple and we'll catch you next week.